Indeed. But what is sane? Especially here in our own country, in this doom-struck era of Nixon, we're all wired into a survival trip now. No more of the speed that fueled the 60s. Uppers are going out of style. This was the fatal flaw in Timmy Leary's trip. He crashed around America selling consciousness, expansion, without ever giving a thought to the grim meat hook realities that were lying in wait for all the people who took him too seriously. After West Point and the priesthood, LSD must have seemed entirely logical to him. But there is not much satisfaction in the knowing that he blew it very badly for himself because he took too many others down with him. Not that they didn't deserve it. No doubt they all got what was coming to them. All those pathetically eager acid freaks who thought they could buy peace and understanding for three bucks a hit. But their loss and failure is ours too. What Leary took down with him was the central illusion of a whole lifestyle that he helped to create. A generation of permanent cripples, failed seekers, who never understood the essential old mystic fallacy of the acid culture. The desperate assumption that somebody, or at least some force, is tending that light at the end of the tunnel. This is the same cruel and paradoxically benevolent bullshit that has kept the Catholic Church going for so many centuries. It is also the military ethic, a blind faith in some higher and wiser authority. The Pope, the General, the Prime Minister, all the way up to God. One of the crucial moments of the 60s came on that day when the Beatles cast their lot with the Maharashi. It was like Dylan going to the Vatican to kiss the Pope's ring. First gurus, then when that didn't work, back to Jesus. And now, following Manson's primitive instinct lead, a whole new wave of clan-type commune gods like Mel Lyman, ruler of Avatar, and what's his name, who runs spirit and flesh. Sonny Barger never quite got the hang of it, but he'll never know how close he was to a King Hell breakthrough. The Angels blew it in 1965 at the Oakland-Berkeley line when they acted on Barger's hard hat, con boss instincts, and attacked the front ranks of an anti-war march. This proved to be an historic schism in the then rising tide of the youth movement of the 60s. It was the first open break between the greasers and the long hairs, and the importance of that break can be read in the history of SDS, which eventually destroyed itself in the doomed effort to reconcile the interests of the lower working class biker dropout types and the upper middle Berkeley student activists. Nobody involved in that scene at the time could possibly have foreseen the implications of the Ginsburg Kesey failure to persuade the Hells Angels to join forces with the radical left from Berkeley. The final split came at Altamont four years later, but by that time it had long been clear to everybody except a handful of rock industry dopers and the national press. The orgy of violence at Altamont merely dramatized the problem. The realities were already fixed. The illness was understood to be terminal, and the energies of the movement were long since aggressively dissipated by the rush to self-preservation. Ah, this terrible gibberish. Grim memories and bad flashbacks looming up through the time fog of Stanion Street. No solace for refugees. No point in looking back. The question as always is, now. I was slumped in my bed in the Flamingo feeling dangerously out of phase with my surroundings. Something ugly was about to happen. I was sure of it. The room looked like the, some site of disastrous zoological experiment involving whiskey and gorillas. The ten-foot mirror was shattered but still hanging together. Bad evidence of that afternoon when I, my attorney ran amuck with the coconut hammer, smashing the mirror and all the light bulbs. <laughs>